Hello and welcome to the channel, I'm Ben and in this video I'm going to try and help you get started with listening to and programming your first frequencies and channels in your Biofang walkie talkie. So I keep seeing the same or similar questions appearing on social media pages regarding things like I've bought a Biofang off Amazon, do I need to program it, can I use it straight out of the box? What's the difference between a frequency and a channel? I'm only hearing static. What am I doing wrong? So let's try and answer some of those questions. So firstly, it doesn't matter which model of Biofang walkie talkie you're using, or if it is even a Biofang for that matter, as the principle is the same for most budget walkie talkies on the market. Today I'm using the BFK63, which has been kindly supplied to me by Radiolity. And if you're interested in purchasing one of these, then there'll be a link in the description down below. So first of all, let's look at the difference between frequencies and channels. So channels are just where you store your allocated frequencies. So unless you buy two identical radios, it's likely that channel one on one radio might be totally different to channel one on the next radio. So with that in mind, that's why we need to program our frequencies to the desired channels and maybe even give those channels a name rather than just a number for easier identification. So if we take a look at the K63, it's fairly typical of most similar budget radios. It's what we call dual VFO. So you can see there's two sets of numbers on the screen, the top set and the bottom set. That's where we can listen to two frequencies at the same time. That's like dual VFO. That's what most budget radios will do. They're capable of listening of at uh, maybe not exactly the same time, but uh, you can monitor two channels at once or two frequencies at the same time, which is why there's two sets of numbers there. And um, we can switch between what we call frequency mode or channel mode or VFO and frequency mode. So there's um, at the moment, if we uh, press the orange button at the front of the K63, that's your V and your M. So either, let's say, VFO mode, changes it to VFO. Press it again, it'll put it to channel mode or memory mode. So VFO and frequency is the same thing, or channel and memory is the same thing, which is why you'll see uh, V and M on the uh, on the buttons there. Let's say it's VFO mode or, uh, or memory mode. Memory's being, like you say, your, your stored channels. When these come out of the box, uh, these generally have, I think, about 17 channels, maybe more. Uh, this one's got a few more in there. It's probably over 20 in this one. There's 22 stored in here, just out of the box. Generally, they don't really mean too much. They're just kind of uh, either VHF, very high frequency, or UHF, ultra high frequency frequencies that have just been set by the manufacturers. And like I say, if you buy different models or makes of radios, the pre-programmed are usually different. A lot of the time they're in the amateur radio bands and uh, I did uh, hear somebody on one of our local amateur radio nets recently saying that uh, he'd been at, I think it was either a dog show or something similar, or a country fair, and the uh, the car park marshals were using uh, ham radio frequencies. Basically they'd bought some Biofang radios, cheap to use for, uh, uh, for marshalling events uh, with sort of no really thought to it they thought they were cheap didn't realize you had to have a license or that you could be causing interference so they just happened to be using uh, like i say one of the uh, amateur radio two meter frequencies because that's what the radios had in them they've built all the same radios and they would not reprogrammed or anything so they uh, um ham radio friend of mine suggested they probably should uh, move channels or find a, uh, a more suitable frequency which is uh, what they did i think but um yeah it's well worth uh, just checking that you know what the licenses are or the license regulations are for your particular country. And we'll uh, we'll talk about that further on in the video. So we know the V and M button changes between frequency and channel or VFO and memory mode. The next button down, and again, it depends on the model of radio, but generally most radios will have a similar button somewhere. They'll have an A and a B button, which swaps between your top and your bottom VFOs. And there's normally a little indicator on the screen to show which is your primary and which is the secondary VFO. The primary being the one that if you push the push to talk button, that's the one that's generally going to transmit on, but it may, if that channel's not busy, receive on the second one. And like I said, we need to program frequencies in that are going to be useful to us. So you may well have bought one of these and you want to keep in contact with family members. 
you might be looking to get your amateur radio license or it could just be that you simply purchased one of these because they're not too expensive and you just want to have a, a listen around and see what you can hear. And like I said, some of the messages I've seen on social media, face, Facebook and that sort of thing, people get a bit disheartened because they buy one of these, they switch it on, they work out how to make it scan, but it's just scanning those sort of 17 or 20 uh, pre-programmed frequencies, which there might not be anything on. There might not be any activity on those specific frequencies. So you, we need to look at frequencies in our area and again a lot of the messages I see people are saying oh what uh, what frequencies are the best ones to listen to well it really depends where you are in the world or um, all that kind of thing really so um, it's a really difficult question to answer uh, for me I would suggest that if you're in the UK there are certain frequencies that you'll always be able to pick uh, things up on so you may have heard of PMR446 if you're here in the UK or if you're in the States, uh, GMRS, similar sort of things, or FRS, Family Radio Service, again, different frequencies. And what I'll do is I'll put a uh, an image up on the screen of the PMR446 frequencies here in the UK. And you can see they've been allocated channel numbers. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the channel that you're going to have it in your radio. So channel 1 on this radio, I could program for PMR446 channel 1. But like I said, I might want to name that channel as PMR4461 as well because we could also, say, for example, program VHF Marine radio frequencies into these to listen on. I could have VHF Marine channel 1, which might be, I don't know, channel 20, for example, in the memory channels. So it can be a little bit confusing, but like I say, the radios are quite versatile. You can name as well as number the channels which is a, a definitely a useful feature so you'll also notice on this chart the 10 wx channels they're not used here in the uk however over in the united states i believe they're quite active especially if there's storms and uh, weather warnings they're definitely channels worth programming into your radio so first of all for example and let's just have a go at programming one of those pmr446 frequencies into here and like i say you do need to check on the legalities of this because although you could listen on 446 technically you can't transmit because uh, for certain reasons like the power output of the biofang is actually too high for the uh, regulations on pml446 here in the uk and the antenna has to be non-removable which obviously it is on this but as an example i'm just going to put a frequency in so i'm going to push my v and m button to change from memory mode into frequency mode which allows me to directly enter a frequency and i'm going to enter four four six zero six two and then it's already put five oh in there for me because it knows the step that i want to use so that's uh PMR446 channel 1 entered in frequency mode. So if we now want to save that as a memory channel, we need to go into the menu and then we're going to go all the way up to menu 13, which is memory channel. And then we're going to press menu again and we can select the channel that you want to save it into. So I'm going to go for channel 23 because that's not been used yet. And then I'm going to press menu. So that's now saved that as channel 23. So now if I change from VFO mode back to channel mode, you can see channel 23 is 4460625, which is channel 1. A little bit confusing because I've saved it as channel 3, but we can change that to a channel name. So if I now go into the menu... And then we go to menu zero, which is channel name. Uh, we can now, it's, it's, it's giving us the ABC. I can call that 446. We can change between characters and numbers. So uh, using the bottom button there, and there's normally a way of doing that. I'm going to call this 446. And then channel, so CH, and then back to numbers again, channel 1. And I'm going to press menu. So there we go. So that saved that as 446 channel 1. And then when we exit that, you can now see that rather than having the frequency on the screen, it's called at 446 channel 1.
So there you go. I hope this video has helped you make a start on finding and programming some useful frequencies and channels. If you have found it useful, then please leave a like, comment and click the subscribe button to keep up to date with future videos. And I'll leave a link in the description down below to a playlist of similar videos that I've made in the past. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.